A few days ago, I took part in my first game jam, the Huawei Game Jam, organized by Jonas Tyroller, creator of the game Will You Snail? Game jams are events for developing games in a relatively short time around a surprise team. The goal is to exercise your programming skills and creativity, test new concepts and have fun, while having contact with the game development community, giving and receiving feedback on projects. At the end, the participants evaluate each other games and those with the best evaluations can receive some kind of prize. I have been wanting to participate in a game jam for a while, but I have always been afraid of the short duration of the events. In the case of the Huawei, it lasted only for 3 days. It is very difficult to create a cool game in so little time. My projects take several months on average, mostly because I cannot dedicate so much time at once. I have too much stuff to deal with in real life. But what caught my attention in this game jam was the team, collaborate with AI. I was already analyzing how to introduce neural networks into my game Dead End for some time. I had even tested it with the enemies. Then I decided to test it with the player, that is, create a neural network that plays my game. But it is not as simply as create the AI and let it play. The theme is to collaborate with it. The first form of collaboration is pretty obvious. As the player plays, the neural network learns. First I did some tests passing the game control manually to the AI, to see if it is really learning and to test how the inputs and outputs of the neural network perform. The outputs were relatively easy to define, the movement of the player with a positive value forward and backwards with a negative value, similarly for going left and right. A value to look up and down and another to look sideways, simulating a mouse or a joystick and one more really important output, to shoot. For the inputs I had to do some more tests. Of course there is the information about the player's status, as health, if he suffered damage, if it is waiting for the cooldown of the weapon and his vertical rotation. But the most important is the player's vision, to know the distance to the walls and to the enemies. At first I thought of putting the two together, with distance from the walls represented by positive values and distance to enemies with negative values. But the neural network didn't seem to be learning very well, it got confused. So I ended up splitting it up, with 15 values for the wall, covering the 60 degrees field of view of the player and another 15 enemy values, but here with the inverse of the distance, so that zero values represent no enemy in sight. When enemies are very close to each other, in the same viewing angle, their values are added together to represent a greater threat. While the player has control of the game, all input and output values are saved in lists and before passing control to the neural network, it trains using the data that has been generated so far. To test the neural network, I started to manually switch the player's control. At the beginning the neural net can't do much, it has a very random behavior but after a few rounds it can even start killing some enemies. But manually switching is the least interesting way to apply the neural network, because the player may forget about it and end up playing all along. So I thought of a way to make a gradual transition of the game control from the player to the neural network. First I thought of making a weighted average of the player's inputs with the neural network outputs, but the result was not good, it was too difficult to control, not very responsive. So I decided for a completed takeover logic, where the player plays a few seconds and then passes the control to the neural network for other few seconds, and so on. As you advance through the levels, the time given to the player decreases while the neural network time increases. You play a little bit, the neural network learns and plays while you watch, and then it starts all over again. But I wanted the player to have more influence over the artificial intelligence. So I thought, why not let the player define the topology of the neural network, that is, define how many neurons and how many hidden layers the neural net will have. By the way, this is a very important and complex part of neural networks. A bad topology can lead to a neural network that cannot learn very well or takes a long time to learn. So the idea is to optimize this structure. For this I created a setting screen that appears every time a level is finished. Here the player can add new layers and change the number of neurons to retrain the neural net and see how it performs. 
The current neural net score is displayed, where higher values close to 1 represent neural nets that can best model the training data, so that the player does not start testing multiple neural nets with many layers and many re neurons, I chose to limit the customization with a credit system. To get a credit, the player needs to pass a level or the neural net needs to kill an enemy. With each credit, a new layer can be added to the neural net, or it can be retrained with a new topology. The amount of neurons in the existing layers is free, as long as you have a credit for training. Overall, the concept of the game was already quite interesting, but to bring an extra level of challenge, I decided to define a training mode, with procedurally generated levels and a testing mode, where the player has almost no control, he can only adjust the topology of the neural network. But in order to play the test mode, the training mode has to be completed first. After that, I still wanted to work on new artwork for the game and replace the dead end assets. First I replaced the exit icon with a robot and a human indicator to know who is controlling the game. Then I tried to make a more futuristic weapon to get more into the robotics team, but the result wasn't that good. I will probably redo it later. I thought about redesigning the enemy sprites and textures, but my time was running out and the next day I wouldn't be able to work on the game because I needed to work on other things. So I decided to leave it as is, pack the game with Pi Installer and create a page on itch.io. After that starts the evaluation phase at the game jam, where each participant evaluates games from other developers and when possible gives feedback to what they did well and what can still be improved. In this edition there were more than a thousand games submitted, a lot of interesting stuff. In total, I managed to evaluate more than 40 games in a period of almost a week, while 25 people evaluated my game. At the end of the day, my game was ranked in the 141st place, which technically puts me in the top 15%. Uh -huh. Overall, I found the experience quite interesting, especially when you are the kind of person who can't decide on a team for your game or who gets bogged down in development and can never finish your projects. This is for you. But 3 days in my opinion is too little time. For my rhythm to make a more or less complete game, I think I will need at least 10 days. After all, the time I have to develop is very limited. But some things help a lot, for example keeping a library of artwork and sounds, and also creating templates of different types of games, so you don't have to start from scratch every time. In my case I reused a lot of stuff from that end, so I could even say that they created a mod and not an entirely new game, but with a little more time I could make it look way different and add more elements, it simply wasn't possible. I will try to polish this concept a bit more and update the game. And what I'm learning here will facilitate my next developments, where I want to introduce genetic evolution of neural networks, making one fight the other. But that will be for a future video, and this one is over. Thanks for watching and until the next time.